Are you feeling like you have a little bit of pain in the hips or the knees? Well, sometimes it's not the workout, it's your shoe that you choose to wear. I have Dr. Erica Martin with me today. Dr. Martin, what's going on? So I think the bigger question is what kind of shoes are we wearing on an everyday basis? Well, and I kind of so, wear a little bit of a kitten heel. Yes, which those are super cute. I love them, <laughs> but I think we have to think a little bit about how these are impacting our feet and subsequently the rest of our body, okay? okay? And so the first thing that I see, you got a real pointy heel, which is very cute, but again, it really crowds your toes together, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? And then the other thing too is I really don't love heels on shoes, okay. honestly, mm -hmm. um, aside from very special occasions, because again, that's very um, hard on uh, the heels themselves, but then also it kind of predisposes you to some hip and knee pain and in knee particular. Pain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanna talk you through some uh, kind of an easy way to see if your shoes are crowding your feet, which mm -hmm. is really important oh, okay. to do. Right. Um, so I'll have you take your shoe okay. off here. All right. We've got a little um, bucket of water All here. Right. Yep. And so what I'm just gonna have you- um, Foot in? Yep, foot in. Okay. Perfect, and then come back out onto our cardboard here. Okay. Perfect. And then up off of the cardboard. Whoop. Perfect. <laughs> and I so, love footprint. Yes. So we have our footprint here. And what I like to do is I just like to kind of trace that before it dries up. Okay. I what not. is this showing us? So this is just basically showing us the kind of true size of your foot. Um, I'm not an artist, excuse me. Um, <laughs> and the actual width when I push my foot down, right? Exactly. Pressure, so that's okay. showing, yeah, like where the majority of your weight is falling okay. when you're um, when you're making contact with the ground, which is yeah. ultimately what we care about exactly. with, with your shoe. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so here, as you can see, we are squeezing our foot into a shoe that uh. is too tight for us. So that causes <laughs> a lot of, this is what causes bunions in women. Oh, it does. So when okay. we wear these cute little shoes that yeah. squeeze our toes, uh. especially and put a lot of um, kind of pressure on the toes, that's what causes bunions. Okay. When we have, uh, when we're starting a workout program, it's also a good idea to buy good tennis shoes, yep, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. So show me an example that we have of those. Yep, so I am not advertising anyone in particular. I've got a little stuff on them. Um, but a good, like kind of neutral support um, a running shoe can be great. Now it kind of depends on your activity. So if you're doing a lot of weightlifting, I would recommend like kind of a more weightlifting type focus shoe. But for most people, your general exerciser, um, something like this with, with good arch support and cushioning is gonna be just fine and a, kind of a neutral support rather than anything more specific than that. And if you have been wearing those tennis shoes for more than six months, I want you to get out and buy a new pair because your body can really use some more support, right? Yep, absolutely. So there, there are different theories about how many miles you should be putting on your shoes. Most people, we don't need to get that granular, but if mm -hmm. you're seeing that you know the soles are starting to get worn down, you're seeing the kind of underlying sole on that shoe, that means it's time to get a new pair. All right, I'm gonna put her in the chair. Doctor, you go over there. I'm gonna see if your shoes fits you right. Now watch, those are your doctor's orders. Come on, take your shoe off. Oh, geez. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.